for it too much. But, you know, it is still a fun game mode, but I'd much rather have them maybe put some, like, a... Well, to be honest, they don't really put much more effort into these, like, in other game modes. But perhaps, like, a proper sort of mode, like Empires, but that'll probably come if they do release a Dynasty Warriors 7 Empires. But yeah, if you're going to pick up a Dynasty Warriors game, I'd definitely save it this, or 5, or 5 Empires, because they're definitely the best. Five Empires if you want a bit more strategy added into them. This is for if you want a bit to know a bit more about the Three Kingdoms and... I can't decide which one's actually more fun between this and Five Empires. Oblivion. Now, a lot of people seem to hate this game and to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It does get... It's not that enthralling. The main quest is utter garbage, but you basically just want to avoid that anyway and just basically explore anywhere. It has a very... it kind of sounds like a sort of dynamic world, but to be honest, it's not really dynamic. Things don't really change depending on your actions. Everything just sort of stays the same no matter what you do. But still, you can, have, you can sink a lot of hours into this game, as you can with probably mo like most Bethesda games. Skyrim is definitely improvement over this. The combat system was, I suppose, a improvement over Morrowind, but uh, there wasn't really as much to the game, and it can get boring every now and again. And, like for me, I, I had like a massive binge on it. I just kept playing it constantly, wind like waned off it for a bit, and then come back to it now every now and again. But I can't take the PC version because I do actually have this on PC with mods and stuff, which infinitely increases the value of this game. Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Really cool action platformer. It had... Again, I think it probably focused a bit more on the combat than the actual platforming, but it did have platforms and puzzles in f like a fair quantity. Most of the game is really enjoyable. There are a couple of annoying sections, like the bit where you're... Again, I'll try to remember this, like, because I've beaten this actually. When you're in the swamp and... You gotta like sort of go about and you're sort of like, was it like a speed bike sort of thing? I don't really remember what you were going on about. And you have to like get to all these different points and stuff. That game of the game wasn't really fun, but for the most part, it all is. Combat system is pretty good. Jumping and all the platforming sections, good. Great cinematics, really nice art style and concept. And really seemed like it needed a sequel. It's, I don't remember, I think it was meant to be a sequel coming out for this, but this did, game did not sell well, so I think that held it back, but I think they did manage to pull through and get a sequel out for this coming soon. But I don't know, you have to look that up. I think it's called like Justin Slave 2. Fallout 3. Now, I do actually have the Game of the Year edition, however, I could, for some reason, it wouldn't load up the Game of the Year edition cover on this. This game is uh, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I've sunk probably two, probably more than that, probably about 300 hours into this game. It is really addictive. It's just so much to do in it. It's never came by Bethesda. So as I said, you sink a lot of hours into it, even if you like do it accidentally. And the world is just so big, there's so much you can do in it. It, it's just a game you really got to play for and experience for yourself. And there's like again, you can do the sort of main quest. The main quest, I guess, is okay. But again, the main thing you want to do is basically just explore, go around, do as much as you want. It has got the sort of like um, fast travel system. But if you like, if you want to play the game itself, like. You really want to sort of miss out fast traveling as much as you can, unless it's just for pure convenience. Because there's so much more you can discover in the wasteland. Same goes for Oblivion if you just wander from place to place, either on foot or, say, Oblivion on a horse, rather than, you know, uh, fast traveling everywhere. But yeah, definitely get that. DLC, uh, some of it was good, some of it was not so good. But they do unlock a lot of cool items for the game, and it's got like RPG elements, as like you know, 
obviously Oblivion does, this also set RPG elements. But word of warning, I mean this game's been out for ages now, probably everyone knows about it. But this especially anyone who's played Fallout One or Two, but this is nothing like Fallout One or Two is in gameplay as it's first person shooter rather than sort of RPG isometric game which the other two were. Final Fantasy Thirteen. Um, I used to borrow it from my brother, and then I think I just really got it just because I really wanted to play through it before I got thirteen two, which was see better. The combat system, once you get into the game, is a lot better. When you start out, it can be really dull. When you get into the game, the combat system is pretty decent. Everything else, not really. Story is, you know, the story is like uh, Final Fantasy stuff. It is, you know, it, it's a, it's I guess you'd say it's it's a decent story. It's a good story. But they just outside of like, the cutscenes and the dialogue sequence, there's nothing really more to the game than the combat system. They really took out all the sort of city wandering, uh, like, and just the sort of like talking around people, wandering around cities, the free roam sort of elements of the game. There's like a couple of places that you can do sort of free roaming later on in the game. And by that I mean it's just rather than a corridor, it's a big field where you can run into different creatures and like. They luckily did get rid of random encounters, replace them with enemies that you can actually see on the map. And that gives you the advantage to get stuff like sneak attacks on them. But it's an upgrade in just say combat wise and Final Fantasy twelve. I didn't even really like Final Fantasy XII's combat, and it's m m definitely more like the other old combat systems, but it still got this sort of twist on it, and Final Fantasy XIII too is the same sort of combat. Folklore, I haven't really played enough into this yet to really give you anything, sort of detailed look on it, it's a new game, that, well, it's not a new game, but it's a new game for me. It's a really cool sort of RPG. You've got two pl characters to play through, so it's sort of two pers two perspectives on the story of the game. And think of it as in I don't know. I don't really like making this comparison, but this sort of pack comparison I'm going to make. Think if you were to play Pokemon, but the Pokemon being the you know Pokemon, it was an action RPG, as in. You're going to run into creatures, you're going to end up fighting with them, you're going to end up capturing them, and then you'll get the different powers to use, and you say you'll get, like, say, a poke like, what? I was about to call it a Pokemon then. You'll get a folk, and then you'll use it, and say, like, you get some, like, it'll make you do this sort of powerful charge attack forwards, and you got another one which is basically just like a sort of, you'll just slice your sword, and another one which basically acts as a shield. And there's a lot of creatures to it, and they get like a pretty inventive. And there's a lot of worlds to the game with a lot of different creatures. Each one has like a different sort of creature type. Like a there's a lot of monsters in the game, but each one has a different sort of like fo like type of focus based off of like the first place, a sort of wooded, like mysterious forest world. And then. And that has like sort of creatures that fit into that environment there. And then later on, just remember to the demo, you'll get a sort of like, like um, destroyed castle sort of world, and have like enemies suited to that sort of area. I don't know, definitely worth picking up if you like action RPGs. From Mission Evolved, uh, two game, two game, game modes of this game. The mech combat, which is, you know, it's okay mech combat. It's got the, um, it's got the sort of, like, uh, mech where they can't, like, you know, fly about and the like, really. They can, you can hover and the like, use boosts and, uh, jump. So, they have got sort of, like, more sort of Japanese-y look on, you know, mechs. But, you know, the mech combat is still really good, if you don't mind that. If if you're looking for something like, I don't know, Mech Warrior, this isn't really it. It's a third person when you're in the mech view. 
but and then there's a third person shooter version part of the game which are pretty you know average perhaps below average you, this game would be terrible if it was just those sections but luckily the mech warrior bits do save the game kind of I'd say buy it just what I just said mech warrior bits for the mech bits I'd say get it for the mech sort of bits I mean only get it if you can get it sort of cheapish don't pay like a fortune for this game I'll have two of the orange box this was actually I think it was ages ago this was basically my first sort of encounter with Half-Life 2 actually playing the game really good collection I really like the Half-Life 2 games and the like I really like the Half-Life 2 games that draw on here. They do still play better on PC. And it's got Portal on there, which is basically one of the sort of launch titles of this. Well, all those three on it are, all the three on the front cover, as you can see, there are. And it also had other games with it. But. Uh, Team Fortress 2. This version of it, I think the Xbox version works a lot better, and I've now played the Xbox version of the Orange Box. Apparently, they've really messed up the PS3 version of Team Fortress 2, and it's like literally, at least last time I checked, no games on it. So, if you want to play Team Fortress 2, I mean, hell, it's free on computer now on PC, so just play that. Just Cause 2. Well, actually, if you just own a PS3, definitely pick that up for if you want to play the Half-Life games or Portal. It's so the main thing you play on is the PS3. But otherwise, if you're looking to play Team Fortress 2, get the 360 version or much better, just get it for free on the PC. Just Cause 2. I went into this game expecting a lot from the demo, which I played a bunch. But I just got so sort of tired of the game. I don't know, I should play some more of it. It's another big sort of open world sandbox game where you can basically just mess around and do a lot of stuff. I mean, now basically it's just a copy of the game which I own and my friend plays all the time because I don't really play this game. But it's got a lot of really cool stuff. You do a lot of really cool sort of stunts in it and everything with your grappling a hook, parachutes, you sort of like grapple onto planes, punch out the driver, fly the plane up really high, fly it towards another plane, jump on the roof of it. Let them collide or whatever. Join two planes together. There's a lot of really wacky stuff you can do on this game. And definitely if you like the sort of sandbox games, I definitely recommend it. I, on the other hand, uh, I don't really enjoy it too much. But, you know, I'd, def I'd recommend picking it up if you found it cheap or especially if you like the sort of sandbox open world games. Killzone 2. Really good first person shooter. Step up from Killzone 1. Controls, uh, I feel like they could be worked on a bit. It does f sort of feel like it's running a bit slow. Like it's not running as fast as it really could be. And they added the cover system, which is actually a pretty good cover system. It works nice, it works well. They've changed, they changed up the environments in this game. Like if you play it, I heard a lot of people complain, like, oh, it's just grey city, grey city, grey city. That's just the first couple of levels you get past that. They do just change up the backgrounds. Not as much as they do in the sequel to this. But, you know, it's a really fun just FPS. Definitely worth picking up. I don't know how big the multiplayer community is on this anymore. But, yes, good. Killzone 3, even better. Felt much more smoother, slicker. Still had the like all the good features of the previous game, and added in even more good features. Stellar graphics. Uh, the multiplayer, I believe, it's still pretty busy, and the multiplayer is quite fun. It's got bot modes in it and the like as well. Split screen co-op, which is not something you see that often. All the screens are pretty tiny, so that's kind of annoying. But yeah, the only weird thing about it is that you play as one of the characters who ties in the second game, in the third game, if you play two-player. And actually, you know what? I believe that's what happens. <laughs> I haven't actually got to the end of Killzone 2. 
I think I should probably finish it off at some point. I'm like right near the end, but never quite finished it. Killzone 3 I have finished, mainly because I've finished it two player.